أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله التيبين الطاهرين المأسومين سيما بقية الله المنتظر روحي وأرواه العالمين لتراب مقدمه الفداء ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين Congratulation on the happy birthday of Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali alayhi salam May Allah make us sincere follower of Ali alayhi salam There are contradictory statements regarding the outstanding personality in the world. Some groups are ready to sacrifice their life in their goals. On the contrary, you will find some bigoted group which have an intensive hostility towards them. Amongst the great personality in the world, none of them have been judged like Ali alayhi salam. Due to short-sightedness, some group gave him godly and divinely title. They consider him as a Lord, as a God. On the other hand, the other group had a hostile attitude toward him. Cursing him, they killed Imam in the mosque of Kufa in the month of Ramadan. The Prophet of Islam was aware of these two groups, of these two deviant groups. The Prophet says, O Ali, Halaka fika isnan, muhibbun qal, wa mubqizun qal. Two groups will perish about you. The first group, the people, or the group who exaggerate you, with giving you godly title. And the second group, your enemies. According to psychologists, two elements are very, very important in personality of each person, inheritance and education. These two elements, brothers and sisters, are very important. Regarding the first element, as the children inherit the at our attributes, as the children inherit the apparent characteristic of their parents, such as the style of eyes or the colors from their parents, they can inherit the inner attribute, the inner attitude, such as generosity and braveness. Regarding the first element, Imam Amir al-Mu'minin Ali alayhi salam's father was Abu Talib the head of Mecca, the head of Quraysh. He was very generous and brave. He devoted all his life in the 
prophecy of Prophet of Islam. Abu Talib shows his affection and love toward Prophet Muhammad by saying that لَيَأْلَمَ خِيَارَ النَّاسِ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا نَبِيٌّ كَمُوسَى وَالْمَسِيحِ ابْنِ مَرْيَمِ Abu Talib, the father of Ali alayhi salam, says everybody should know that the Prophet of Islam, he is a Prophet like the Prophet Moses and like the Prophet Jesus. Another thing which is very important in the shaping of the personality of Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali alayhi salam was his mother. His mother was Fatima, the daughter of Asad. She was amongst the first ladies who announced and who accepted Islam. She was very keen and devoted his life as well. Hakim Nishaburi is one of the great Islamic scholars. He says Fatima bint Asad, when she was about to deliver her, her baby, she went to Masjid al-Haram and came close to Kaaba and the wall of Kaaba was cracked miraculously and she entered the Mac in, in the Kaaba and Imam Ali was born inside of Kaaba. This history was narrated by both Shia scholars, Shia historians and Ahl, our brothers, Ahl Sunnah scholars as well. For better understanding the life of Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali alayhi salam we can divide his life into five levels, into five periods. The first part of the life of Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen starts from his birth until the Prophet received his mission. The second part starts when the Prophet received his mission until the immigration of Prophet Muhammad from Mecca to Medina. And the third period starts from the immigration of Holy Prophet until to his demise. And the fourth part starts from the demise of Holy Prophet till the Caliphate of Ali alayhi salam, which took 25 years. And the last part of his life starts from his Caliphate until his Shahadat, which took about nine, four years and nine months. Regarding the first period, the first period, brothers and sisters took about 10 years because when Imam Ali was born, the Prophet was in the age of 30. And 10 years later, the Prophet took his mission he became as a prophet. So the first period took 10 years. Since the children are very, are very ready to accept everything, the Prophet Muhammad had a very important role in shaping the personality of Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali alayhi salam. In, his, in our books, we read that when the Imam Ali was born, the prophets of Islam used to feed him, used to rock his cradle, saying that he is my brother, he is my successor. The prophet had a deep affection for Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali alayhi salam. He never left him alone. And whenever he 
wanted to go to the cave of Hira, he used to take Imam Ali salam with him. What is the philosophy behind this particular attention of Prophet Muhammad toward Ali? During these 10 years, during the first period of the life of Amir al-Mu'minin Ali alayhi salam. What is the philosophy of this great attention? It is clear, the answer is clear. Because this age is very important. And since he is going to be as his successor, the Prophet Muhammad must have a great role in shaping his personality. Imam in Nahju Balaghe says and talks about this period, talks about the first period of his life. Imam in Nahju Balaghe says, وَلَقَدْ أَلِمْتُمْ مُوْزِئِ مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ You know my position. You know my position with Prophet. I grew up in his house. When a great famine happened in Mecca. Imam Amir al-Mu'minin Ali alayhi salam stayed in the house of Holy Prophet. Why? Because the Prophet wanted to teach him day and night. Because he is going to be his successor and he must to top a high level of education. Imam in Nahjul Balaghe remember this time of his life saying that Balaghat kuntu atba'ahu itba' al fasil isra umme. Imam says, You know, I was like a baby camel who follows, who always follows his mother. I follow him day and night to learn the moral virtues. According to Nahj al whenever the Prophet of Islam used to go to the cave of Ira, Imam was with him. According to reliable hadith, Imam says, لَقَدْ كَانَ يُجَاوِرُ فِي كُلِّ سَنَةٍ بِهِرَى I used to go with him to the cave of Hira. Due to the purity and piety of Amir al-Mu'minin Ali alayhi salam, he was able to hear some voices which others were not able to hear. Due to his purity of his heart, he was able to see some pictures, some images, which others, which others were not able to see. Imam in Nahj al says, "Lakat ara nur al wahi wa ashum rihan nabuba." I see the light of revelation and the fragrance of prophecy. And the Prophet of Islam, he says, Ya Ali, إِنَّكَ تَسْمَعْ مَا أَسْمَعْ You hear whatever I hear. وَتَرَى مَا أَرَى You see whatever I see. إِلَّا أَنَّكَ لَسْتَ بِنَبِيًّ The only difference between me and you, I'm a prophet and you are not prophet. لَكِنَّكَ بِوَزِيرْ You are my successor, you are my helper. Let's move on the second, the second period of the life of Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali alayhi salam. The second period of his life took 13 years. It means that the, from his prophecy, the, from the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad, when he received his mission, in the cave of Hira, until he left Mecca to Medina, it took 13 years. 
During these 13 years, let's have a look during these 13 years. Brothers and sisters, Imam Ali was the first person who accepted Islam. When being a Muslim was a great crime and sins, Imam announced himself as a Muslim. Let me narrate a short history of at the time. Khubab ibn Arat, he was one of, one of the followers of Prophet Muhammad at the beginning. He accepted Islam at the first year of his prophecy. Khubab ibn Arat, he says, when we accepted Islam, the unbelievers of Quraysh, they made us to lie down on the rock on the heat of summer. They used to cut our, our skins with Caesar. So Imam Ali announced his Islam when being as a Muslim at the time was a, great, was a big crime and sins. Imam, Ali, Imam Ali's enemies, unfortunately, tried to hide the outstanding his virtue. Later on, Muawiyah told to all his governors, nobody is allowed to mention the names of Imam Ali. And he ordered the wage of all his followers should cut. And if anybody narrate any hadith from Imam Ali, his house should be demolished. So some pious people, when they wanted to narrate any hadith, they tried to narrate indirectly. For example, they say one man of Quraysh, he says this or that. And he was this and that. Marwan ibn Hakam, he was a very bad man at that time. He says that the pillars of our government became strong with cursing Imam Ali alayhi salam. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz says my father was a very great and proper and perfect speaker. He used to speak very with eloquence fluently. And when Omar ibn Abdul Aziz says, May, whenever my father wanted to curse Imam, he talks with stammer. And once I ask him, oh my dad, you are very perfect scholar. You speak, you speak in eloquence and fluently. Why whenever you reach to the name of Ali, Imam Ali, and whenever you wanted to curse him, you can't talk properly. He says, I knew that the Imam Ali is the real successor of Holy Prophet. But since I want to be in the power on the power, and I had to curse him. Anyway, At the first level, at the second period of the life of Imam Amir al-Mu'minin Ali alayhi salam, which took 30 years, the Prophet, the Prophet's responsibility was to propagate Islam secretly. Whenever he found any suitable, a proper person, the Prophet announced his mission, explained his mission. But after three years, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Prophet, You must announce your mission openly. So in the, in, the thir, in, the year of, in the third year of the Prophet Muhammad's mission prophecy, the Prophet Muhammad 
arranged a meeting with all his family, about 40 people. The Prophet Muhammad told to his family that I'm a messenger of God. Allah sent me as a messenger to all. I came to guide you. I came to show the right way from the, from the wrong way. At that, at that meeting, when the Imam Ali was in the age of 15, the Prophet said, Ali is my successor. Ali is my brother. And Ali is my friend. Do you do the pressure of unbelievers of Quraysh in Mecca? Some Muslims had to leave Mecca. Some of them, they went to Ethiopia, and the other group went to Medina. In the year of tens, the Prophet of Islam missed two his great supporters. Abu Talib, as I told you, he supported Prophet for 42 years. The Prophet Muhammad missed him. And later on, he missed Khadija, his financial supporter. So the unbelievers of Quraysh tried to put the Prophet of Islam on more pressure. Quran mentions the goal and the decision of Kufar Quraysh. Allah says, وَإِذْ يَمْكُرُ بِكَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَيُثْبِتُوكَ أَوْ يَقْتُلُوكَ أَوْ يَخْرُجُوكَ they have, they have three options. They are going either to kill you, or to arrest you, or to make you to leave Mecca. So the Prophet Muhammad was ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to leave Mecca privately. And he told to Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam to stay in his house, pretending that he is in his house. So the Prophet of Muhammad left Mecca in the midnight. At that night, <coughs> this ayah was revealed. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْرِي نَفْسَهُ بْتِغَاءَ مَرْزَاتِ اللَّهِ Amongst people is he who sells his soul seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But some of faceless historians, they try to hide this historical fact. They say, this ayah was revealed about Ibn Muljami Muradi, not about Imam Amir al-Mu'minin Ali alayhi salam. Who denied? Samurat ibn Jundab. Samurat ibn Jundab had a story with Prophet Muhammad. Samurat ibn Jundab is the person who killed 8,000 of followers of Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali alayhi salam in, in the city of Kufa. In the third period of the life of Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali alayhi salam, which took 10 years from the immigration of Prophet of Islam until the demise of his, the Prophet of Islam, which took 10 years, Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen had the other great job. He tried to, to write down and to collect Quran. If you see nowadays, after 1,400 years, all Muslims, we have one Quran. The Quran are the same. We don't have any different version of Quran. Why? It is due to the effort, efforts of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali alayhi salam at that time. He tried to collect the Qur'an and present one Qur'an 
for Muslim community at the time. And he used to write down <coughs> the letters of Holy Prophet because he used to write the letters to the kings and uh, uh, in all countries at the time. He tries to write down, he tries to write the Prophet's hadith and the letters. Brothers and sisters, this is the very short biography of Imam Amir al-Mu'minin Ali alayhi salam, which we divided his life into five periods. But in this part of my speech, I would like to move on a practical issue. Let's move on other dimension of the life of Amir al-Mu'minin Ali alayhi salam which I think is useful for me and for you as well. What is the reality of worshipping in the eyes of Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali alayhi salam? In the eyes of Imam Ali, the reality of worshipping is respect, obedience, and ignoring whatever and ignoring everything apart from him, apart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we worship with a particular condition, we can reach a very great position. You see, accordingly, one of the great titles of Prophet of Islam was Abd. Subhanallah asra bi abdihi. Ubudiyat or being abd is a great title. We repeat nine times in our prayers. Wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. I I bear witness that the Muhammad is his servant and messenger. In the eyes of Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali alayhi salam, the people who are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these people can be divided into three categories, into three levels. Some people worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to attain paradise. Whenever they listen to some Quranic verses They try to do more about that To worship more They worship Like a businessman Imam Ali alayhi salam says They are like businessmen This kind of ibadat Has a little value Imam says the second group, they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Fear of the Allah's punishment. Fear of Allah's chastisement. They fear. They worship because of that. Imam Ali alayhi salam says, and the second group, وَإِنَّ قَوْمًا عَبَدُ اللَّهِ رَحْبَةً they are like slave people. But Imam says the best group and the third group, the people who are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to attain paradise, not fear of his chastisement. Why? Bal Vajatuhu Ahlan Lil Ibadah. Because they found that Allah is a good person for ibadat, good things for ibadat. In Ilahi, Imam says in Nahjul Walaghi, Ilahi ma abattuka khawfan min narik. I don't worship because I fear of your punishment. Wala tam'an fi jannatik. I don't worship because I want to reach to paradise. 
بل وجد تو که مستحقا للعباده Amongst the religious practice brothers and sisters the prayer is very important Even if you have a look to the religious practice and previous divine religion you will find the prayer is very important The prayer had, has a, had a very important rule in previous religions. The Quran says, the Quran narrates from Jesus, says, وَأَوْسَانِي بِالسَّلَاتِ وَالزَّكَاتِ مَا دُمْتُ حَيًّا I was told that to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as long as I am alive. One person asked Imam, I wanted to enter paradise. Imam said, Ud'ullah and tudkhina lil jannah. Please pray for me. I want to enter paradise. Imam said, Recite your namaz with long sajdah. Try to last your sajdah. Try to pr prostrate for a long time. In hadith, Our seventh Imam, when he finished his Fajr prayer, he continued his sajda until sunrise. In Hadith, Imam says, one proper and perfect namaz is better than 25 times hajj. And one hajj, one per proper hajj is better than a great amount of gold if you give in sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Quran says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ The faithful people has attained salvation. الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي سَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Those who humble in their prayers. In other ayah, Quran says, لَا تَكُنْ مِنَ الْغَافِلِينَ Don't be amongst the heedless. So brothers and sisters, khuzu or modesty is very important. The only condition of it, the only condition of it is if we have heartly presence, if we have khuzu, if we recite our prayers with humble. Imam says, كَمْ مِنْ قَاوِمٍ يَكُونُ حَذْهُ مِنْ سَلَاتِهِ أَتَّبَعَ Imam says, some people, the only benefits of their prayers is to get tiredness. One person asked Imam that Why the prayer is not delicious for us? Sometimes we like to read our prayers very fast. Imam says, because you are like ill people. If you've got a flu, if, you a, you, if you've got a cold, the food is not delicious for you. So, You, uh, Imam says you are ill, your heart is ill. So because of this, you can't understand the taste of food, the taste of prayer. So, brothers and sisters, we, whenever we hear the name of Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali alayhi salam, which today, This majlis is with the name of Imam Amir al-Mu'minin Ali alayhi salam. He was very active in his ibadat. And when we recite his dua in Nahjul Balaq, the dua of Imam Amir al-Mu'minin in the mosque of Kufa, we know how great Imam he was. How great Imam he was. 
when he was killed in the mosque of Kufa, Imam Hassan alayhi salatu wassalam says, the person was killed, lam yudrikhul a avvalu, nobody can understand him. Anyway, we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us to be in his way, to be his sincere followers. Just let me end up my speech with one great hadith. The Prophet of Islam says, the door of paradise, the door of paradise has a doorbell. Whoever wants to enter to paradise, he must to shake this doorbell. And when the people shake it, they hear the name of Ya Ali. It's in the Hadith from Holy Prophet. Allami Tabo Tabai Rizman La Ta'ala Alay. He elaborates this Hadith very, very nicely. He says, Do you know why? Whenever you shake this doorbell, you hear the name of Ya Ali because the owner of paradise is Ali. And whenever you want to enter to anybody's house, you must name the owner of that house. And since the owner of paradise is Ali, you hear the name of Ali. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.